the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat Al-Qaeda. All you gotta do is start looking around, start thinking for yourself, start investigating things, and you will see it all right there. So you have the power, humanity has the power, we have the power. Do you wanna fight? You better believe you got one! Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. And for me, give me liberty or give me death! The answer to 1984 is 1776. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. Here's what we have in store for you on this June 20th, 2013 edition. Tonight, was it a bomb or just a car accident? An engine ejected down the street and damage done to the car are not consistent with the LAPD story. A look at the suspicious deaths of other high-profile enemies of the state and Michael Cargill on what you need to know to protect yourself and your family. Then, Alex Jones interviews Vigo Mortensen. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Top story headline, evidence indicates Michael Hastings was assassinated. Now this is something that was talked about on the Alex Jones radio show and we'll show you those clips in just one moment, but let's go to the article first. For all normal reasons, which account for virtually all car fires in modern cars, the fire would have started when the engine comp compartment progressed slowly down and scorched the hell out of the paint before ever reaching the gas tank. And keep in mind the damage done to the car was not consistent with the LAPD story will go on. Whenever I'd been reporting around groups of dudes whose kind of job was to kill people, one of them would usually mention that they were going to kill me, said Hastings. Now, as I alluded to earlier, Alex Jones and David Knight talked about this at great length on the Alex Jones radio show, so here's their in-depth report. We're going to get into a special report now, the evidence that Michael Hastings was killed. And now the media will go along when they burn down a cabin with somebody in it, when they shoot somebody in the top of the head during questioning at their house. It's not being questioned. And that's when you go into a real tyranny. They'll start killing thousands of people. They'll start arresting people. And at that point, media and journalists have to start taking precautions to protect ourselves. And then if it goes too far, things go on the offense. That's the only way to stop things like this. And they want to start a war. They want to have a secret war against journalists. They've been having one with the whistleblowers, all of it. I mean, if they kill me, folks, you know who did it and you know what to do. I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, David Knight, um, you're here with us. One main reason they haven't killed me yet, and they've beat me up and threatened to kill me plenty of times, is they know if they kill us, I have a media organization left behind. That's why you're here, buddy. I've told the crew that privately. You're here, so if they kill me, it continues on. And I want justice. I want reporters there. If they blow me up, they put me in a room with a hooker. Yeah. Uh, you guys work with me. You know I don't do that stuff. That's right. I, uh, they killed oh, me. Yeah. All right. They killed me. Period. I don't do drugs. None of it. Okay. So bottom line, if this happens, they killed me. This is so obvious. We've got newscasts that are local, but not on the national news where explosion engine flies down the road. I mean, this is incredible. We're going to get to that. This is a short segment. We're going to have you in the long segment coming up. This is a larger subject of political assassination. But, I mean, this thing absolutely stinks to high heaven. You know, last night when I was getting ready to do the nightly news, I started looking at this, and I didn't even get into why this might happen. I mean, didn't even get into the conspiracy theory aspect of it. I'm just looking at this as an accident, and it made absolutely no sense to me. You know, first you hear, oh, it's a fiery crash, high-speed crash. He hits into a tree, and the car catches on fire and burns. That's the way people typically die in a fiery crash. They, they get pinned in a car that then uh, is, is somehow compromised mechanically. A fire starts, they can't get out, and they die. That's not what happened here. If you look at the eyewitness report, the only one they've got is a guy named Luis Cortez. And he says he's driving down the road, sees a car coming at him at high speed, 
and it jackknifes. Now, I don't know exactly what that means because jackknifing is typically what you're talking about, a truck doing this articulated semi-trailer. Uh, but he said jackknife and pieces flew everywhere. And you look at the report. That's that an explosion. Yes, yeah, an explosion. If you look at the report from uh, the people that were there, they said that it, it, was an ex it sounded like a bomb, shook their whole house, rattled their windows. And then another guy points to the engine that he said flew 50 to 60 yards down from the point that it had stopped. And it makes absolutely no sense that an engine is going to fly out of a car at a right angle to the point that it's going when it hits a tree. Then if you look carefully at the pictures, you see that the car is not really crashed. It came to rest up against the tree. Yeah, it's not even really run into the tree. It's up against it. Yeah, it's up against it. It's kind of beside it. You can actually you can see, see the car's exploded. The engine's flown down the road. And you can see the nose, what's left of the frame of the car, sticking out beyond the tree. So it's kind of like it's beside the tree after the fire is out. You can see this in this picture from the L.A. Times. And the, the nose of the car appears to be sticking out from beyond the tree. The fire seems to be concentrated around the passenger area, but there's absolutely no way that the car is going to veer off to the left or to the right. And uh, Well, I've seen a hundred photos of car bombs. That's what they look like. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was a tremendous impact there. But the car was not compromised, as you would expect, when it hits a tree. And the fact that the engine flew down the road and the fact that this, this one person who saw it said the pieces went everywhere. I mean, that tells you that it blew up while it was going down the road. It did not, it did not hit a tree, catch on fire, and then... We're going to get more into this and, and get into the statistics, but tell people about this clip. Uh, this clip that was, this is from the Nightly News. So uh, we had this last night. It was a local news story that uh, had this on there. And you'll hear the people, the eyewitnesses uh, reports on here. Let's uh, take a look at that clip. Rolling Stone magazine called Michael Hastings a fearless journalist who refused to cozy up to power. His death at 33 came by way of a fire-fueled and explosive crash. It sounded like a bomb went off in the middle of the night. My house shook. The windows were rattling. I oh. couldn't have written a scene like this for a movie where the engine flies from the car, which was about, I don't know, 50, 60 yards up, right down here to this telephone pole. Un. Believable. And in the national news, it's no foul play, ran into a tree. They blew that car up. M maybe we should say a car crashed into the Oklahoma City building. Yeah. Right. A car did. You know. Well, and when you look at that picture, the car, the engine doesn't look like it's on fire, right? No, it's been blown that. out. It's been blown out. And it looks like it's going back part of the transmission there. You see the alternator. Well, you're an engineer, but you notice it's all aiming back from yeah. its trajectory being blown out. Well, you're not going to you're not going to send the engine down the road at a right angle to the point at which it hits a tree, even if it hit the tree. But when you look at the pictures again, you don't see the body being smashed up against a tree. And so when we looked at this last night. They put the bomb in the dash. You can see it right yeah. there. So it blew back towards him and blew the engine out the front. That's right. Then the car flipped down the road up against a tree. That's right. Absolutely. Seriously, when I talk about people know what to do if they start rounding us up, disappearing us, I have worked as hard as I can to be nonviolent. I have done everything I can. And I, if they kill me, I don't want people to just go out and randomly you know, be violent. I want you to aggressively get the word out. Because I'm not afraid to die. I'm afraid of these people running the world. Because once you give into a mafia culture... It just starts taking over and expanding until there's no society and you collapse like all those third world countries. And then the argument is, well, even if you're not a bad person, work with the evil because you'll have a better lot in life. It's, 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 it's the disease of our civilization. And obviously, if they start disappearing people in the night, Alexander Schultz and Eatson talked about it, how they burned in the camps later wishing they would have done something. I don't think we've gotten to that point yet, but we need to have a real debate, not just about NSA spying and persecuting the Tea Party with the uh, IRS and persecuting pro-life groups who stand up for little babies. Look how evil these mafia people are. That's all it is, is we're being muscled. They are killing people. And, and I, uh, David Knight covered it last night. A, uh, uh, authors come out you know, with the history, and the New American Magazine wrote about it, about how the Pentagon admits their main tool now is assassination. Well, it's been like that for at least 60, 70 years. I mean, I know a lot of Army officers, Texans, uh, who were in secret assassination groups here in the U.S., and it's not like the, the people I know are something special, ladies and gentlemen. It's giant. Do you understand that? And they have got, let's be conservative, more than 10,000, I would guesstimate, current domestic assassins that are 
that are Army, Navy, you name it, when you become a Navy SEAL or Green Beret or any of this stuff, or even Delta Force, then there's levels above that, okay? And, and those levels are called the dark side. And it's the narcotics, it's, the, it's all of it going on. And these are like made men. I don't know if you can tell the story about your Navy SEAL friend. You were just telling me, oh, you don't want to tell it? No. But I mean, these guys, you know, it's just, it's disgusting. It's not cool, it's not tough. And they kill each other, too. I mean, no doubt they did a hit on Chris Kyle. No doubt all this stuff's going on. They will flush you down the toilet in a minute. Remember, hundreds of thousands of Gulf War troops got the Gulf War illness. At least 50,000 have died in the 20 years since. They knew when they detonated those 200-plus chemical dumps that it was all going to rain down and soft-kill people. And that's now confirmed for 20 years, the brain stems. It's back on the New York Times last Friday. Again, you do not want to, there's no honor in this. And it's cowardly to blow up this journalist. I know he lied to McChrystal and said it was going to be a puff piece. And in their mafia rules, I, let me tell you, I would not be let in by the Pentagon or something and lie to them. If I told somebody I'm not going to you know, expose any of your confidences, because reportedly that's what he did. Because, uh, I mean, it's not just that. I don't tell people I'm going to do something and then not do it. I'll tell the globalists I'm going to try to bring them down. I'll tell them I'm coming for them. In these mafia rules, this is how they operate. I'm telling you, you mess with their families or you work with them and then lie to them. And that's what Hastings did. You're free game. Now, I'm not saying it's good they blew him up. But it's another issue here. If they can burn down somebody in a cabin, say they did it and then not get in trouble. And they can say that they're uh, you know, going to kill people and blow them up. And people see a bomb go off and kill Pat Tillman and, kill, and then kill five members of Private Lynch's unit who said that she was cowering in fear. They went out and killed them. And I told Lynch through channels. I said, you better go public and say it was all a lie. They'll kill you next, like Pat Tillman. She went public and said it was all a lie. That's the only reason she's still alive, folks. This is how they operate. You mean nothing to them, okay? Now, uh, you've got the floor. Break all this down. Go over the history of it, what we're facing, and then that... Uh, well, Alex, like you were just talking about, the L.A. police, what they said in the uh, case of Chris Dorner, and how they were caught even... You could hear the transcripts, the audio, the audio of uh, the police talking to each other saying, burn it down. They still denied that they burned it down. In this particular incident, we've got the L.A. Police Department, same police department, saying the engine's location is evidence that the driver was, quote, hauling Irish ass and lost control, unquote. And with the engine torn off, the gas lines would rupture and it would start a fire. Now, the engine's not going to go flying, <laughs> no matter how fast you go in a new Mercedes, the engine is, and parts are not going to go flying. It's everywhere. bolted in. Right. It's ab oh, yeah, I mean, this is not some old rusting hulk with the engine mounts about to come off. This is a new Mercedes. And Look, I flipped a truck doing 80 before, and the engine didn't come out. Right. Rolled it three times. Right. And, and so, the, the, but they want to say, you know, they've got a couple of different uh, narratives here. One of them is that it crashes into the tree, catches fire, but then you've got this engine hurled down the road. And they say, oh, yeah, well, the engine hurled down the road is a and it's that, that's how the fire would have started. But you can't hurl the engine down at a right angle to the point of impact. And if the engine hurls down the road as he's going down the road, it's an explosion. So and you have the witnesses saying, boom, it woke them up, shook their houses. Right, right. This is a very rare occurrence, too. As we're pointing out, in FEMA, uh, uh, Department of Homeland Security, they were talking about highway vehicle fires. And there's about a quarter of a million of them a year. Typically, nothing happens. Only in about 2% of these do you have a fatality. Actually, the actual number is 2.6% out of every... Can we document cam that, guys? Sorry, not 2.6%. It's 2.6 out of every 1,000. So it's 0 0.26. So I was okay. wrong when I said 2%. It's 0.26. Yeah. 0 0.26, yeah. So that's... Uh, so it's less than 1%. Less than 1%, exactly. Of course, the, uh, as Darren McBrain pointed out, the uh, probability goes up if you're a journalist that they don't like. Now you were talking oh, yeah, they've about done those studies on uh, politicians. It's not just that they fly more. They do it with other frequent flyers. I saw the statistic like 15 years ago. It's, it's probably changed either less or more. I don't know. Where you were something like eight times more likely to die in a plane crash if you were a politician per capita than other frequent flyers that fly the same amount. That's right. Now, when we covered this on the nightly news last night, we didn't go into speculating as to who might this be, you know, because he's 
really, you know, ticked off a lot of people. From McChrystal to he was investigating, he had done investigative reports on the CIA, was working on one for the CIA, and as you pointed out, he had tweeted to uh, WikiLeaks that he was being followed by the FBI just hours before he died. So there were a lot of people wow. in the government, you know, as... as, as just like out. cop of the year Terrence Yankee in Oklahoma City said, I got feds behind me, and they tortured him and killed him. Mm -hmm. Last phone call to his partner. And as you're talking about this, this assassination uh, government that we've got going on. This uh, book is Mark Mazzetti's Pulitzer Prize winning author. The name of the book is Way of the Knife. And what he's talking about in this is the fact that Obama is using not just the CIA, but he's using the military now for assassination operations. That is becoming pervasive. And uh, McChrystal was part of running that. McChrystal was part of, was head of the special operations forces there, right? And McChrystal was also involved in the Pat Tillman cover up. You know, he was the one oh, yeah. who was there giving the awards and... and oh, yeah, he's, the he, he, he's the main suspect. He strikes again. I forgot McChrystal ran the op and the cover-up of Tillman. That's right. Oh, but, so, oh, boy. So, you know, you've got this situation where you've got this mass, as you pointed out, a massive amount of people, not just in the CIA, but now in special operations in the military. And uh, you've got another author who has written an entire book about how assassination, and it's not just drone assassination. That's something that we look at and we say, wow, that's, that's really cold. That's uh, amazing that they're just raining death down on people from the air. That's just more visible. The invisible things that they're doing with, this, with all of these special operation forces and with the CIA, that, as you said, has been going on for a long time. But they've but just now, expanded it. They've expanded it, and they don't even try to cover it up much anymore. And you get these ridiculous uh, statements from the L.A. Police Department with situations like Chris Dorner, and again, now with this car accident, it just doesn't make any well, sense. Well, you know the L.A. system was the beta test. Daryl Gates, before he died, mm -hmm. gave interviews that the CIA in the 60s came in as a beta test, put them in black uniforms, militarize them, make it sexy, spree de corps, all the other cops will want to be federalized. So started the uh, SWAT teams? Is in LA. SWAT teams, all of it. They started in L.A., then in New York, and Dallas, of all places, then Houston, take Taking special ops hitmen and putting them into police departments mm -hmm. so that when they need to kill a CIA guy, uh, like they did down in Houston a few years ago, they pull him over, the CIA uh, section guy gets out, what Carney was his name, and they shoot him right in the head under the helicopter. The guy's hands are at his side, boom, execution. And then he tracked back that cop, he was in black ops. Mm -hmm. So every major department has these federal hitmen on it now. Man, this and they're not even feds, they work for foreign banks. I mean, this country's just in so much trouble. And what's amazing about it is, like you said, you can get a video of it, you can get audio recordings of it, you can look at where the engine is, where the car is, the condition of the car. None of the Witnesses stuff saying it blew up. Yeah. And it's like, because I've, I've seen cars crash outside my house, running a tree, people have been hurt, killed. Everybody's seen it. You hear... It's a big noise, yes. but it doesn't shake your house. Only the explosive wave by high explosive sends that. Mm -hmm. That's right. But even if it had been an explosion because of gas lines, the engine was ejected down the road. The engine is not on fire. Uh, gasoline smoking. doesn't send those explosive waves, though. Right. You talk about a, a smoking gun. I mean, there's no smoking engine. You know, <laughs> there's, I mean, that, that car was just really engulfed in flames, but the engine is down the road, not touched. So, I mean, that, that... And the witnesses are saying it's driving down the road. I saw one where there, it's driving and bursts into flames. Yeah, that's what the witness says. He says, I was just coming northbound on Highland, and I saw a car going really fast. All of a sudden, I seen it jackknife. I just seen parts fly everywhere, and I slammed on my brakes and stopped and tried to call 911. That's Luis Cortez. That's the eyewitness report, the only eyewitness report, because this happened at 4.30 in the morning. Now, uh, statistically, at being in L.A., it was probably the police that loaded the bomb. Yeah, but that's usually, it's kind of like a turf deal, and they get their payment, and that's how it works. Well, I tell you what, I mean, the L.A. Police Department, especially after the Dornan case, they, they just don't, they don't have any credibility. And They're the Gambinos. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, I have had dinner with retired detectives and, and, and people that are basically with the Vikings. You know, they made movies about that. It's, a lot, it's real. And they're just like, of course 9 11s an inside job. Of course they blew it up. I mean, they're like, what do you do? Every, everything's a mafia. I mean, I mean I, I've been to a bunch of parties with them. I know some are famous cops. I mean, it's like, of course. It's all a big joke. I don't think this is cute. I don't want my kids growing up in no. a country like this. No, no. And it, it is really frightening that they can just do this out in the open.
and deny it, and no matter how ridiculous it is. Another story that broke yesterday was the uh, TWA Flight 800, the new documentary coming out where they've got six investigators who were shut down by the FBI when this happens. They arrested journalists. Ago. We needed to get yes. them on who snuck in and got the samples in the hangar. It was, it was an explosive, continuous rod warhead. That's right. And in that case, you see the FBI is going out and interviewing people and just not putting down an official transcript, putting down a summary, not showing the summary even to the witnesses to say, did we get it right? I mean, they just went through a perfunctory There were 700 Army and Navy witnesses to the missile. Yeah. They were having a drill then. Yeah, exactly. And you've got, you got, you got transcriptions of uh, airline pilots. Of course, you know the plane was loaded with Egyptian military officers. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. i got to show you this. The rise of the killer drones, how America goes to war in secret. Michael Hastings, an inside look at how killing by remote control has changed the way of flight. Yeah, these are and, the articles. Here's a drone strike from above. See the wheels are still intact? Gigi Ernetta just pointed that out. Is it possible wow. this guy could have been hit by a drone as sort of a, you know, you're oh, writing yeah. about drones, yeah. now we're going to hit you. Yeah. McChrystal's out there. Yeah, yeah that drone strike does look like that. But, it, but generally, uh, I know it looks similar, but that, wouldn't, that would hammer the engine down yeah. or, 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 right. or, or maybe out. Yeah, depends on where the missile hit. Right. I mean, it's much easier and, 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 and easier to hide. Why would they go with something exotic? Or maybe they'll start having drones out in public and kill people. I mean, it's really a flaunting now of these psychopaths. It, it could be, but seeing other car bombs, the professionals put plastic explosives, and a lot of times with an accelerant and with something that's flammable to burn up the evidence, it looks like a dashboard bomb to me. Right. Yeah, because that was a very intense fire. Like, that looks even more intense than that would have mm -hmm. been. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that car was completely Well, fragmentation. Yeah. I mean, that, uh, Gigi Ernetta brought that to my attention, and I'm like, we got to go. And you guys are talking about this right now, and it's, it's just so. He's writing about drones. Yeah. And I don't know that drone you know, strike. I mean, that does. Yeah. That's a drone. Yeah. Let me that's show people crazy. on document cam that are watching on TV. Go, go ahead. And uh, also, I, I sent the guys a link. Um, McChrystal was on that billboard a while back that we uh, yeah, that we took, uh, covered, and uh, it was. Um, when Colin Powell and a bunch of those guys came here to speak, Ru Rudy Giuliani was the other guy. And um, somebody put, put up their uh, Pat Tillman and uh, the numbers on it. It was pretty crazy. They put a star on the guy's forehead. I don't know. It was pretty, and I just thought that was interesting. Too. Some bad person yeah. climbed up on there and did that here in Austin? I know. I know. wonder I who that was. I can't believe it. But that I was I disrespectful. Just, <laughs> I just think that, you know, people already know the truth about this guy. And people have known it for years, you know. And he's just, he's still walking around scot-free at that point, mm -hmm. you know. How dare someone climb up on the billboard and do that? I hate when people do that. <laughs> you should, we should just let these people kill everybody. Yeah, exactly. You know, we should all, we should all be scared of them, too. You know, that, we, this Hastings thing is going to get a lot deeper, definitely. Well, I don't even think they care now. I mean, no. maybe they didn't. I'm surprised they didn't have a drone fly over in broad daylight and announce, we're now going to blow it up, kind of like Dorner. We're going to burn it down. All right, bring the fire, burn it down. And yeah, well, and the guy said it's suddenly jackknife. I mean, that could be from a bomb or it could be from a drone strike. You know, how do these things happen? Actually, when they hit one, they do kind of fly up and do that. Wow, it depends yeah. on how, what kind of missile they used. I mean, are they that well, brazen at this point? If it, was, if it point? was a bomb from underneath that had enough force in it to sever the engine and sh send it down 150 feet down the road, I mean, it would it would go up, lift up in the air. Yeah, that sounds like, that me. sounds like... Eight ten pounds of plastic. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but it, it it doesn't. It's not a situation where it did not crash into the tree. No, pin him in there and then catch fire. That is not what happened. But that's, that's what, what the news the is going to say. Right. Here's, Here's the deal: if if my car blows up, they killed me. Okay, right. All right, yeah. good job, dude. All right, we'll be covering this more. Well, one other thing from McChrystal is uh, you may remember he was also a big proponent of the universal service. You know, so in spite of his criticisms of Obama that were reported by Michael Hastings that caused him to get fired, he really loves Obama's programs, right? He loves national service, and he hates citizens having weapons. You know, he made the rounds of all the talk shows. He's an anti-gunner. He's yeah. a real authoritarian. Oh, yeah, and he was talking about... Better not talk too bad about him. I'll end up like Pat Tillman. So why do, why do you want to have to have um, military weapons? And what he would talk about would be the velocity of the bullet. He wasn't talking about the fact that Homeland Security is getting hollow point bullets, which are far more destructive to people. Uh, you know, but he was talking about, oh, these military bullets, they travel this speed. You don't need that. And it's like... The speed of the bullet doesn't happen. But these guys are such done. gangsters illegally spying on us. And, and Alexander, the head of the NSA, says, hey, I'm going to meet with the FBI director and I owe him a frickin' beer. I mean, it's all mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. there's just such a bunch of goons. Yeah, yeah.
But it they is. will destroy this country if they're able to. Yeah. It's just amazing to me, as I said, when I look at this, how the media is just falling in lockstep with this official narrative. And you can see the pictures, even that the media puts there, that contradict what they're saying. And they still go <laughs> along with this. Well, that's story. always the evidence. Is there immediately no foul play, ran into a tree. Yeah. And the witnesses all say the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. And again, he tells WikiLeaks, I'm being followed by the FBI. I got I to gotta get this out quick. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, he'd be like, the, the government's following me. Oh, my car blows up. It's like, oh, nothing to see here. Go on to sleep. Well, and, and I mean, will the media stand up, you, you prostitutes of the globalist, shelling out your families, even as they kill you? There's a great report from Alex and David, so definitely go to prisonplanet.tv and watch that whole thing, the whole breakdown, so you can see it for yourself again and again, and send that to your friends and family. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show.